So the first example I'm going to talk about is the ability to have a community. Now, this um, does require a login, essentially. So you could have logins for people. Uh, and those logins, by the way, they can be a whole host of different things. They could be an email address and password that you have specified or that the customer or whoever is using this community has specified themselves. Or it could be things like Facebook authentication or Twitter. So if they've got a Facebook or Twitter or Google account, something like that, they could authenticate to this portal using those accounts as well. And we can also bespoke this. So once we know who they are, we can configure the user interface and the experience and the, the information they have access to dependent on who they are, dependent on what level of membership they maybe have, all these different things we can provide a bespoke uh, feel. But this is a community. So say, for example, you've got um, uh, a business and you're looking to have more of a community feel to it so people can ask questions and work together and get latest information. You could have this as a portal that they log into um, and maybe search for things. So they could search for things based on web pages you've, you've published, blog articles, forum questions, ideas, cases, knowledge articles, and they can search all of that information. So this is really useful as well for um, people that maybe are building out um, like FAQs and things like that. But I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Further down the page, you can see we could have um, articles. Now, because this is just a dummy one, we don't have any sort of articles in here. But you would, could show almost like a news feed of news articles that have come up, most recent ones, top rated articles, things like that. Um, we could also have uh, the ability to have forums, um, ideas or blogs being submitted through this or access to knowledge base articles, creating cases or contacting. So having all that information readily available makes it much easier for people as part of the community. One of the key things that I love about these type of community pages is the forums. And again, this is not going to be branded or um, anything like that. It's just, this is just the standard of the way it looks. So it does look a little bit 90s if I'm honest. Um, but for all the ones which we have really put together for production use for our customers, they look way slicker than this. But this could be a forum where people go in and ask questions, things like that. So we go into general discussion area and we could create a brand new thread if we had a question or if we wanted to discuss something. Um, so again, got to be careful what I say because a lot of the people that we work with do have NDAs, but we recently built a community out for somebody um, who it was about... Um, the whole community was about something very specific and niche. Um, it was about a specific industry. And those people wanted the ability for all these thought leaders and people that are sharing knowledge and things like that to have a forum which was moderated by the industry thought leaders that people could come in, ask questions and help each other. And it was actually all about career growth is what it was um, predominantly for. So people would come in, post questions, and get people in their industry to help them further their career and, 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 and sort of help answer questions, which makes it easier for them to take a step up that ladder. But those people that are coming and asking those questions, they're paying for that service. They're paying to be a member of this external portal that they can come in and ask these industry leaders questions and help them further their career. But you can see it's really easy to create a new thread, just give it a title, uh, the type, whether it's discussion, whether it's a question, whether it's a problem, um, some content around it, even attach files if you wanted to. And then that creates a brand new thread, um, which the moderators, these authors, um, like system administrator, or whatever, is obviously just a test account, could go in, answer the questions. So we could jump into this new thread in here. And it's essentially just like uh, the ability for people to post questions, reply to each other, um, things like that. Typical social media type feel to this. But again, the, the, the possibilities of this are endless. You could use this for all sorts of ways of engaging with a specific community. Um, I said that's just forums, though. It could be um, something similar that we use for um, sharing ideas um, and the ability to uh, upvote ideas and things like that, whether it's about your service or uh, things that, that potentially you could offer. So very much like how Reddit works, where you could post an idea and then people could upvote it. it makes it much easier for people to see um, afterwards. And also we've got things like knowledge bases. So it could be certain articles. Again, this is just a, a dummy one, so we don't have any real articles in here. But it could be knowledge articles that you're posting people towards. So if there was, say, moderators were noticing there was a lot of questions being asked repeatedly or things like that, they could take that knowledge, 
put it into a knowledge base um, and make it much easier for people to access afterwards. I've also seen this type of thing used um, before by like um, IT support companies to build a knowledge base that people can go and see frequently asked questions and things like that. But again, we'll come on to talking a bit about that later on. The other thing about uh, membership portals, or, or I should say any type of portal, is that when you authenticate, you then have a profile. So you have your own profile page. And again, you could customize this, have different fields in here, and then allow the user themselves, if they wanted to, to configure it. So they could have their own profile picture. They could even reset their own password in here if they wanted to. Um, then they can answer certain um, questions that you've predetermined for them. But something which I find really useful, and a lot of the membership type portals that we've built in the past before, often with memberships comes um, the ability to have preferences of something. So we built out a portal for an organization um, which do a lot of events. Um, so you pay to be a member of their, their, their club and there was a lot of events. So there was like Christmas parties, summer parties, things like that. And then they wanted to have preferences to say, okay, which parties would you likely attend? So that way that they can configure the automated emails which go out afterwards, which are inviting people to come to those particular events. It could be newsletters. So that particular, that same organization, they offered, oh, they, they had a, a huge amount of different styles of newsletters. I think it's like 30 or 40 different newsletters they were putting out a month. Um, now, you can obviously imagine if you're a member of that, not all of that is going to be of interest to you and you don't want to be battered by 40 emails a month from them. So you, instead you could go in and you could cherry pick a checklist like this of all the different newsletters, different types of things that you wanted to receive as a member as a user of this portal and then all the automations in the background would know exactly what you wanted to be issued and then it would only send you the relevant newsletter emails um, that, that were for you but again we can completely um, sort of customize all of these fields um, this is just giving me a bit of a flavor of what um, it would potentially look like so here's another example of a power page. Now, this one is around permit application. So um, again, take all of these examples, by the way, with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying you have to use this for permit applications and things like that, but we've worked with a lot of organizations which have used similar functionality for the ability to apply for something and then get a response. Um, so there was one that we we actually worked with um, UK Gov on. Again, got to be careful. Don't say too much. But it was essentially applications that people were submitting for something to be reviewed. And actually, that particular process previously involved people physically having to put documents on a CD and then post that CD um, to a particular. Uh, section of the UK government for them to review whereas actually it was fully replaced with a power portal which allowed people to go in submit the information that they needed to submit all that information was then stored inside of SharePoint processed we even had retention policies which was clearing up that data after a period of time and things like that and made it so much easier for people to process that information um, so you can see here, this is just a bit of a landing page. It's trying to look at quite sort of fancy and jazzy, but again, this is just um, a sort of mock-up essentially, but you can have it to look and feel however you like. But as we scroll down, maybe there's a bit of information because this is, as I say, it's a website. We can make this look and feel however we want. Um, so even if you had in mind a template of what you wanted your website to look like, we can make it look like that. We can take templates from other websites that we've seen, looks and feels, um, things like that, to make it look how you want. If you wanted to make it look very much like your public-facing website already, you just want to add an external login element of it, then this is perfect because we can use all the same look and feel, layout and things like that of your public website. And in fact, customers in the past before have requested and we've built these power pages to look almost identical to their public facing website. So it's a seamless transition. If you're on their public facing website and you want to go into their login area um, to get members only content or things like that, you could click a button and it it doesn't look like you've ever left. Of course, the URL changes and you can always go back um, to, to the previous website, but the look and feel stays exactly the same. Some people choose that they want it to look um, Although branded, they wanted to look and feel totally different so people know that they're in a almost like premium external user type of area. But what I'm saying is we can include text, images, embed videos, all sorts of different stuff like a, a public website would do. So this is as applications. 
the applications related to things like residential or commercial property, uh, the permit process. So this is just explaining what the process would be. Um, and then we've got sort of common permits. So people would click on this to start off a, a process. So say, for example, um, they wanted to get um, a solar permit or something like that. They could click on that. Then that jumps you through to start your kind of process. So it might be click on submit here. Um, once you've kind of filled out all of those fields and things like that but obviously this is just a, a test um, one so we've just got some example application info here so first name we might say joe blog oh jumped ahead here joe blogs email joe at blogs ltd phone number blah, there we go um, and again we can actually if we wanted to put a bit of formatting on this so we can make sure that it is definitely an email address that's being submitted then it jumps us through to the actual project details or elements of this. Now, this is what we're talking about. These are the different gateways that we were talking about before to make sure we're capturing the right information at the right time. Of course, all of these fields are fully customizable, so we can have however many fields we want in whatever order we want. So, enter description of permit. So, I could just put something like, I want a permit to put loads of solar panels on my roof. Then click on next. Um, then it might ask us for required documents. So this is where we could upload any evidence or anything, any plans that we have um, that we're submitting as part of this application. Um, acknowledgement. So this is just saying, have I actually made sure I've read all the terms and conditions, things like that? Say so yes. Maybe I could put my initials in here and just sort of say, yep. Um, I've looked at that. Then the final thing is to say that it's going for review. Is this all this information correct? Does it look right before I submit? And I say, yep, I'm going to submit. And that's then submitted my application. Now, in a real world system, of course, we would then automate things like an email to that person to say, thank you, we've received your application, your permit application, and expect a response within the next two to three business days or something like that. Um, we could also redirect this page. So we could redirect this page back to um, a certain page or a thank you page or even an area like this, which is like my permit. So if you have already submitted an application, you could maybe then see your application here. So you could see that I've been submitted my application and I could see where it's up to. I'll say this is a bit bit of a clunky system because it's just a, a draft version of what this looks like. Um, but you can then see what my application is. Now, the cool thing about this is, as I say, it integrates with other applications. So we could have a Canvas app or a model-driven app which is accessing all this data in the background. So the people that are processing these applications can use a Power App to update it and say, okay, this is approved or we need more information or things like that. So then the people that are submitting this, the customer, can see updated notes. They could see that the status has changed to in review, for example. Um, maybe we could have some SLAs built into this. So we would have something here to say, you can expect an update by this particular date, for example, or all these different ways that you can then interact with people through an interface um, that, that's external that they can log into to get the latest information. So let's move on to another example. Now, this one was actually um, a proof of concept that we put together um, for uh, educational. Um, so this is something which is essentially booking, but again, take this with a pinch of salt. You could use this for booking all sorts of things. It doesn't have to just be events. Um, it could be all sorts of different things. But essentially what this was um, used for is a college that was um, a private school and they had additional kind of courses and classes and things like that, which um, allowed people to book on to uh, specific things additional as well. Now, this is a really good uh, example, actually, of responsive. So I'm just going to change this to simulate being in a mobile phone view. Uh, so if I click on this, hopefully, there we go. It will simulate being in, in a phone. Um, so you can see here, you would log in. And again, you could do this from a mobile phone, from a tablet, um, from a desktop computer, but this is responsive. So you can either search for a particular event, you could filter by a category or a sort of season, um, for example. Um, and then um, by selecting them, we can click on search and that will then filter those down for us. Um, so we can now see in the winter season, we've got Mondays and Wednesdays, we've got coding camp, um, we've got homework club, um, we've got morning chess club, 
Um, so something's got a little bit wrong with the, the formatting of this. But as I say, it is just a mock-up proof of concept um, that we're working on. Um, and then once you kind of sign in, um, so as I say, it would know who you were. So you would sign in maybe as a parent um, or a student and you sign in. It knows, okay, now I'm Joe Bloggs. I'm parent of um, Jane Bloggs and I'm booking them on to the Morning Chess Club through this, which again could then trigger some automation to notify that person to say that they've been added on to uh, the list of people who are attending and things like that. Um, it could kick off a whole series of workflows off the back of that. Now, as I say, take this with a pinch of salt. It could be used for all sorts of different types of things. It could be used for like asset booking or um, booking like desk booking, or it could be um, all sorts of different things that you might want to integrate too. And then the final example I'm going to show you, again, this is a very, very common use for Power Pages, is an FAQ. So there's loads of... One of the things that I find when I speak to a lot of customers is there's a lot of time wasted by people answering questions repeatedly. Um, and that's both internal, but also external as well. So people asking, saying, oh, um, when's the, how long will it usually take to get delivered? Or what do I need to do in preparation for this? Or blah, 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 whatever it is. There's often a lot of questions. Now, being able to point people towards this, even before they even ask the question. So maybe, let's say, for example, if you were, we were using this scenario um, that we we're talking about before, like interior design, we could use Power Pages to do almost that full kind of piece. We could have somebody coming into a brochure website and looking at it before they've even signed up as a member. They could be looking at what products we sell and things like that. Then we might have them fill out a little form so we know who they are, their preferences and, and things like that, which triggers an automated workflow <laughs> to our sales team to book in a consultation with them. And then it automatically could bounce them to an FAQ to sort of say, okay, well, what next? What, what are you going to expect? Um, what questions do you have um, that we could potentially even answer before we've had a consultation? So they could search for questions in here, keyword articles, things like that. Um, topics. So you could then group some of these by topics at getting started or whatever topic it was that you wanted to include. And then just some typical kind of featured articles. So how do I change my password? What do I do if my account is locked? So these are some typical things um, which people often ask about like membership portals. Um, so again, if you had a membership portal, you'd probably want to have an FAQ element to that that you could bounce people to if they wanted to know how to change their password or how do I submit um, a, an issue or contact you or just having contact information so you can bounce people directly too. But again, this is all super easy and simple to create brand new articles. It's all based around a content management system. So again, having a title, description, links, documents, things like that to have those articles um, really simple and easy um, for people to create and then consume. So I'd love to know what you, what you think about that. So if you could drop some um, comments uh, below about what what ideas have you got? How are you planning on that you could potentially use this? What third-party systems could this replace for you? Um, as I say, take it all with a pinch of salt. You could use it for loads of different things. So if you've got any questions about scenarios or how you might use it, again, drop them in the comments below. And if you need any professional services our Power BI experts are on hand. We can provide you a free one-hour consultation to talk to you about your Power BI requirements. There's a link in the description below to contact us and book your free consultation. Valto are Microsoft solution partners and we have uh, advanced specialization in both adoption and change management as well as intelligent automation. So we can really get to the bottom of what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to uh, automate as well as then report on afterwards using tools such as Power BI. So get in touch with us today to discuss your requirements. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more Microsoft related content. Thank you.